Time now for our live coverage from Davos. And in fact, NDTV's group editor, Barkhatat, has with her cricketer turned politician, Imran Khan. Welcome to NDTV special programming live from Davos. Today the focus is not just economics but politics as well. And for the first time as leaders and politicians from across the world troop into Switzerland, there is also a special session on terrorism and security, really a theme for our times. On this session, not just India's Home Minister, Mr. P. Chidambaram, but also somebody we all know and love in India and follow quite closely, cricketer turned politician Imran Khan. He's here with us at the NDTV studio. Pleasure to have you with us, Imran. Always Thank nice you. to see you. Terrorism uh, being a kind of backdrop of a discussion here in these you know, peaceful looking snowy mountains. Um, for Pakistan, perhaps almost an existential crisis in some ways, isn't it? Well, it Terrorism affects economics. Yeah. Uh, Pakistan is uh, probably the biggest casualty today because of terrorism. Not just that uh, our, we are cutting down on our very low education budget, education and health budget, probably the lowest in the subcontinent. The subcontinent is probably the lowest in the world, except sub-Saharan states. So we are cutting that to finance this war. Secondly, um, the flight of capital insecurity, suicide attacks, uh, uh, the businesses moving out of Pakistan, capital moving out. And thirdly, Pakistan is sitting on a huge mineral wealth. We have huge copper, one of the biggest copper reserves in Waziristan. We have a huge copper reserve deposit and gold in Balochistan. We have uh, uh, probably uh, the biggest uh, coal fields, uh, coal reserves. Uh, 180 billion tons of coal in Thar. Yeah. But because of this terrorism and because of militancy, we can't do anything in Waziristan. Balochistan is in, on fire. So um, the country is held hostage to this. You said after Salman Taseer's assassination, you said this in an interview, that it wasn't so much about a shrinking space for moderates, but that a kind of radicalization uh, had seeped into Pakistani society. And even people like yourself would now think very carefully before speaking on sensitive subjects like the blasphemy law. Are you saying that even someone like Imran Khan today is scared in Pakistan? Well, put, put it this way. When there is a crisis, when times are desperate, the moderates shrink because the people from the moderates move towards extremes. For instance, in Europe, when there's unemployment, the racist parties rise up. Suddenly, their membership grows. Um, and I remember in England, they used to, skinheads used to beat up uh, Pakistanis mm. and Indians uh, whenever there was unemployment. But this is much more severe than that. The war on terror has become, in the eyes of majority of people in Pakistan and the Muslim world, war against Islam. The moment it becomes war against Islam, so you then, there's a divide in Pakistan which has been uh, increased polarization. Either you are pro-America, anti-Islam, or you are uh, 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 pro-Islam and anti-America. So but it's not really that kind of war. That's the way the fundamentalists portray it. Or do you believe it is actually a war against Islam? Uh, but it is, it is America losing the battle for hearts and minds. Terrorism. You don't win terrorism by bombs. You win a war on terrorism by winning people over to your side, isolating the terrorists. Now, unfortunately, what has happened is that this bombardment, how do you bomb uh, uh, villages and expect that there won't be collateral damage, women, children getting killed, more and more people going on to the other side? Unfortunately, the military operations and this bombardment, the drone attacks, all it has done is that it has isolated the majority of the population which considers it a war against Islam, especially Iraq. Remember, Iraq had nothing to do with either 9-11 or with, uh, with Al-Qaeda. Uh, 